Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal. I hope you've all calmed down a little bit after that nervy, nervy night last night. I tell you what, I don't think I've got any fingernails left, so I don't know about you, but uh, Arsenal got there in the end. 3-2 winners against Benfica, 4-3 on aggregate. They are in the round of 16 draw, which will be later today, and I'll talk about that a little bit later in this video. I just wanted to come on talk about a little bit more about last night's game in a bit of depth obviously I did my player ratings video last night if you haven't seen it I'll just run through my player ratings right at the end of this as well um uh, so I did talk about the game a little bit but I thought I'd talk a little bit more go a little bit into more depth about it and what Mikel Arteta and Bamiang and um, had to say it after what was a very very important win last night I don't think we can all any of us can underestimate how important that result was and that goal by Bamiang was right at the death last night had Arsenal gone out last night to Benfica it would have been a really really difficult one to take it would have put so much spotlight on Mikel Arteta I still don't think he would have got sacked or anything like that which I know a lot of you um have been calling for certainly people I see on social media have been calling for um and if he had got if, he, if it had gone wrong last night, then there would have been a lot of pressure on him. I don't think he would have got sacked. I think Arsenal would have certainly stuck with him until next season anyway. But uh, that's all. Um, a re doesn't really matter anymore, does it? Because Arsenal got through. They live to fight another day. And we'll see who they get later on in the day. Um, big night for Aubameyang. I spoke about it in the build-up to the game. Some of the criticism he received. I asked Mikel Arteta about it in the build-up to the game as well. About what Jamie Redknapp had to say after the match against Man City the weekend which I thought was incredibly unfair of Redknapp obviously he needed to make some headlines and he did that but um yeah I thought it was pretty unfair what he had to say and he's lost his superpower and everything like that look it has been a difficult season for all but I don't think any of us um can hide that fact but certainly since Arsenal have improved at the turn of the year then Aubameyang's improved as well he's got 13 goals from 26 games so that's an average of one every two games at the, at the moment that is not the worst this season um, obviously it's not as good as his usual standards but still it's pretty impressive strike rate and uh, even more impressive when you think I think it's eight in his last nine or something like that um, you know he scored a hat-trick against Leeds he scored two against Newcastle he scored another two last night um, you know, the goals are coming for Orba since Arsenal have improved. And I've always said it, if you give Orba chances, he scores goals. The fact was, in the first half of the season, he wasn't given chances. Now he's getting more chances and he's scoring goals. He always will. Yes, he'll miss a few, like he did against um, Benfica in the first leg in Rome. But more often than not, he takes his chances. And when they do arise at the moment, there's no other player in the Arsenal team I'd rather an opportunity fall for for Aubameyang. His first goal yesterday was brilliant. The goal that was disallowed was a brilliant finish as well. And obviously he peeled off his man and uh, was in the right place at the right time to score the winning goal um, as well. He was speaking after the game. He said it was a hard one. I think in the end we deserved it because we showed great character. All the team and all the guys that came in as well, they gave so much for the comeback. We did it. We are so happy. We showed character. We kept calm during the whole match. We scored in the last minute. It could, have been, it could be very good for us for the rest of the campaign. I think in this difficult season, hopefully this will give us some hope, confidence for the future that we can do comebacks like this. So all by hoping last night's result can be a little bit of a springboard for the final three months of the season. Look, Arsenal weren't great last night. Let's not beat around the bush and pretend they were fantastic. They weren't. Um, you know, they could have easily gone out on another day. They would have gone out, but they managed to s sort of scrape themselves up from the floor and got themselves through. And that could be massive in terms of the next few months of the season. Whereas they would have been absolutely on the floor confidence-wise now, um, going into the Leicester game at the weekend. They're not. They're going to be boosted. They're going to be buzzing. I think there will be changes, so it won't be the same starting eleven playing at Leicester. Um, but they'll certainly go into that game feeling an awful lot better about themselves than they would have done if they'd lost. And that might you know, give them, give them some real momentum now to push on for the final months of the season. Um, so, I, I mean, you know, I've said what I had to say about Bamiang. I've run out of superlatives for him, and I still think he's just as good as he always has been. The fact is he hasn't been getting his chances. He did last night, and he showed exactly how prolific he can be. 
But if you're talking about Aubameyang, you've got to talk about Bakai Saka. 19 years old, this kid. 19. Those two assists yesterday, absolutely magnificent for Robber. The first one, the vision to spot the run, to play the ball, to split the defenders, uh, and the weight of pass as well, fantastic. And then the goal, the, the assist at the end, when there's sort of panic and chaos raining all around him. Um, you know, Arsenal are huffing and puffing, but weren't really looking like breaking through. And yet the ball finds its way to Saka over on the right-hand side. And just the calmness he showed, you know, a lot of people would have just whipped it in in blind panic and hoping someone would get the end of it. But instead, he took his time, he beat his man, he looked up, measured the cross perfectly. And Orba, he really couldn't miss at the back post. And um, I mean, Saka is just an absolute superstar. 19 years old, Arsenal, so, so lucky to have him. Cesc Fabregas um, tweeted after the game, I mean, you know, one of the greatest midfielders of the Emirates era for Arsenal, if not the greatest. In fact, for me, he is the greatest. Um it said Saka is such a good player, such a maturity, intelligence for his age, game changer. And uh, I couldn't have put it any better myself. Absolute game changer for Arsenal. It's 12 goal involvements for Saka now, six goals, six assists this season. When you stack him up against the other sort of young English players that the Premier League and the media are absolutely fawning over at the moment, you know, Phil Foden, Jack Grealish. I know Grealish isn't young compared to Saka, but um, those sort of players... Um, Mason Greenwood, you know, Saka is right, right up there. I think he goes a little bit um, underappreciated by those outside of Arsenal just because Arsenal have been struggling so much this season. Um, but he is right up there as the very, very best young English talent there is around. He could play for any team in world football at the moment. The, the, the fact that against Man City at the weekend, he was the one Arsenal player who, you know, looked like he was causing problems with City every time he got on the ball. He could easily fit into that Guardiola side. I'm not saying that he should, by any means. Hands off Pep, he's staying at Arsenal. Um, but that's how good he is. And, um, you know, I think Arsenal was so, so lucky to have him. The fact that they do have him, they've got to look after him. He's played so many minutes now for a 19-year-old. Played again all the game last night. I really do think the time to rest Saka is this weekend against Leicester. Yes, it's an important game. Yes, Leicester is a strong side. Yes, Arsenal want to get three points and they know they've got more chance of doing that when Saka's in the team. But it comes to a point where you've got to rest and protect Bukayo Saka because he must be right slap bang in the red zone at the moment because of the amount of minutes he has played on a weekly basis. Mikel said after the game that he's really fatigued. He's played a lot of minutes. He hasn't had much rest. We asked him to go again and produce these moments and the boy's done it. He did do it. I think now he deserves to put his feet up a little bit. Look, Arsenal have got a big squad. They've got players like Pepe you can play on the left. You can play Willian on the left. You've got Martinelli you can play there. Um, you know, you've got, you can move things around. If you want to play Pepe on the right and leave Saka out and move one of those other guys out onto the left, you can do it. Um, and I just think you've got to protect Saka. He's going to be so important over the final months of the season. If Arsenal are going to win the Europa League this season, Bukayo Saka is going to be at the heart of that. So you've got to protect him. You've got to give him enough rest so that he can uh, avoid any sort of uh, muscle injury. And I think this weekend has got to be that moment against Leicester. The fact that Mikel spoke about how fatigued he is as well after the game, I think maybe that's a little bit of a hint about what could be to come against Leicester. Like I said, I do think we'll see plenty of changes for that one you're looking at Lacazette um you know Martinelli Willian Pepe those sort of players Pablo Mari Cedric coming in I think there will be changes for that one but Saka for me I think is the one the one name that this time this week you've got to give a little bit of a rest to big night for Willian last night there you go I've said it um got his assist came on I think everyone around the country and around the world threw something at the TV when they saw Willian coming on as the first substitute last night along with Thomas Partey. Everyone was probably expecting um, Nicolas Pepe or Martinelli when Arsenal needed two goals but Mikel Arteta went with Willian. Um, it certainly drew a furious response judging by the reaction I saw on social media after it happened but he popped up a couple of minutes later with a very, very valuable assist for um, Kieran Tierney. It wasn't so much the pass. I mean, the pass was relatively easy, but it was a nice run he offered. He found the space, Willian. Nice run down the left. Then he slipped it to Tierney, and Tierney finished it off very, very well. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was a big night for him. Mikel said after the game, he said, I have to mention all the subs because they all came on and made a difference. With Willian especially, I think he changed the game. He gave us much more composure, moments of creativity. He produced a goal for Kieran. And we need everybody on board as this competition has a possibility to make five subs, which is a big bonus. So nice tip for Willian to get a bit of praise. It's been a really difficult season for him um, so far since his move from Chelsea in the summer. 
hasn't really produced what he hasn't produced, plain and simple. That was his fourth assist of the season, only his second since the opening weekend when he got two against Fulham, the other coming against Wolves for Gabriel's header uh, back in December or November, whenever that was. So the big moment for Willian, and he took it well, and you know, Mikel was obviously, as you know, good man management was very, very keen to point out the contribution he made to the comeback yesterday. I think a lot of people were wondering, you know, why did Willian come on in the first place? Well, you know, why aren't you playing Martinelli? Why aren't you playing Pepe? Especially when you need two goals. Surely they're the players to um, to come on. So why did you choose Willian? And Mikel was asked that after the game. And um, his explanation was quite good, actually. I thought certainly, you know, a lot more tactical thinking than most of us. Um, you know, he said because there wasn't much space to run in behind. It was really tight. Two lines, 4-4-1-1 four, four, one, one, or 5-3-2 at times. There was a really, really low block. Not much space to run apart from when they set the line around the 18-yard box. You need people to unlock that with special qualities in tight spaces to create movement. And I think Willie was really helpful tonight. So there's your reasoning for not bringing on the other two. Obviously, those two players who love to open their legs and run. Um, beat players, run into the space behind. And Mikel was watching that game, seeing Benfica 2-1 up and defending very, very deep, thought there's no space for them. They, they can cut, they'll come on, but they won't. their attributes won't be best served in this game because there's no space for them to run into. Willian is obviously more of a player who likes to get on the ball, you know, move it around and um, be creative in a slightly different way to the other two. And that's why he was brought on and, um, you know, it worked, <laughs> plain and simple. So I think we can all criticise Mikel. I mean, I, I have to say I was watching the game and I couldn't believe it when I saw William came on. I was sending messages to my mate straight away saying, "What's what on earth is that substitution about? How can you be bringing William on? There's no reasoning for it. But then you listen to Mikel after the game with his manager hat on and you can understand why he did it. And he, I thought he explained it really, really well there. Um, so credit to Mikel. He got that substitution right and ultimately it helped Arsenal go through to the uh, last 16. Right, let's talk about the last 16, shall we? Because the Europa League draw is today. In fact, by the time you're watching this video, it probably would have already happened. I think it's at midday today. I'm recording this. Uh, it's about 9.30 at the moment. So it, I imagine it will have happened unless you watch this pretty early on. Um, Arsenal have got 15 other teams that they can draw and they include Tottenham, include United, include Rangers, Mikel Arteta's old side, some really good draws in there. There's other sides like uh, Dynamo Kiev, Dynamo Zagreb. Um, young boys are there, Villarreal, Unai Emery is there, lots of teams um, for Arsenal to draw, could be a, um, could be some exciting games, Ajax, AC Milan, the Ivan Gazidis uh, return, like I said, Ajax, you've got Overmars there, so there's lots of interesting matches, Mulder, who Arsenal already beat in the competition, Roma, Mkhitaryan, uh, Slavia Prague, who beat Leicester last night, what a result that was, I can believe it when I saw that. Um, so yeah, there's lots and lots of games. If Arsenal get Spurs, that means there'll be three North London derbies in the space of a week because the Premier League game will be sandwiched right in between the two. It'll be Europa League on the Thursday night, Premier League on the Sunday, Europa League on the Thursday night. Three North London derbies in seven days. What an amazing period that would be. Uh, I have to say, I don't want Spurs at all. Please, I don't want any of the English clubs. Don't mind them drawing each other and knocking each other out, but uh, I don't want them at all. I'd much rather have um, a relatively simple tie. Well, they're looking at that again. There's not too many of them. I mean, Mulder, Arsenal brushed aside pretty comfortably in the group stages, so you'd fancy them to beat them. Uh, the likes of Granada, you'd fancy them. AC Milan having a very, very good season in Italy at the moment, so that would be difficult. Um, so it's a tough one. It'll be interesting to see who Arsenal get. But yeah, like I said, I wouldn't want Arsenal to get Spurs or or a Man United. But who do you want? Let me know. Knock it down in the comments below and I'll go through and see what everyone is saying. So that's at 12 o'clock today. Check me out on Twitter at Charles underscore Watts and uh, I will be following that draw live as it happens and revealing who Arsenal get in that uh, round. A um, little bit about Leicester now before I get on. I'll quickly finish this video of my player ratings from last night in case you didn't see them yesterday. A little bit about Leicester. Like I said, surprise defeat for them at the weekend. Uh, sorry, on Thursday night in the Europa League. So um, I think they'll certainly want to bounce back in style on Sunday. They're at home, which is a boost for them. There's not been any travel. Arsenal is still in Athens as we speak. They're training over there today before flying back. 
um, and then they'll be travelling up to Leicester tomorrow. So, you know, very, very little rest for Arsenal. That's why I think Mikel will need to make changes. I've already said what I had to say about Saka. I think it's time for him to get a rest. Um, I certainly think Pablo Mario will probably come in at centre-back, give one of the other two a rest. I'm not sure if Rob Holding will be fit yet. I thought Thomas Partey made a big difference when he came on yesterday. He got on the ball, he moved it a lot quicker than some of the other midfielders. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if Thomas Partey gets a start um, maybe try and get sort of 60 minutes into his legs before taking him off. Um, so there's plenty of options for Mikel. I do think Lacazette will probably get a run out as well. Maybe it's time to give Orba a rest. Look, you don't want to throw away a game. I'm not saying they will by making these changes against Leicester, but I think you've also got to look for the long term. And Arsenal have played so much football recently that a lot of these players will be right on their last legs and right slap bang in a red zone, you would think. So um, the medical staff, Mikel Arteta, has to look after them. You don't want them breaking down. So that's why I think we'll probably see a few changes um, for the weekend game on Sunday. I will be at the King Power, so looking forward to that. Bright and early, 12 o'clock kickoff, I think it is, uh, at the King Power. So, uh, yeah, I will be heading up there, so please do follow me on Twitter again, and I'll bring you all the action from that one. Okay, before I go, let's quickly go over the player ratings. If you didn't see um, them last night, I'll rattle through these fairly quickly as I've already gone over them. Uh, ben Leno, I gave a six in goal and he had two shots on target to face. Both of them went in. He couldn't do either. Couldn't do anything about either of them, to be fair. So I'm not going to blame him for that. Other than that, it was a very, very quiet game for Ben Leno. So he gets a six. Bellerin, I'm going to give a six to... Um, he did all right. He got substituted in the second half. I think he had the most touches of any player. Um, almost passed it of any player on the, on the pitch last night. I thought Gabriel and Louise struggled, especially in the second half when Arsenal were chasing the game. They got very, very nervy, I thought. Quite fortunate on a couple of occasions to get away with a couple of sloppy errors. So I give them both of those fives. Kieran Tierney gets a seven. I thought he struggled a little bit early on, grew into the game, and then he gets a seven for that goal, what goal it was and how important it was. So he gets a seven. Xhaka, I thought, played pretty well. Was, again, the heartbeat of everything in the, the ball, uh, that good that went through Arsenal from the centre of midfield. I could give him a seven. Ceballos, a bit harsh. I'm giving him a five but because of those two major, major errors. But I actually thought up to the first one when he gave away the free kick just before half-time, I thought he was playing really well and was potentially Arsenal's best player in the first half. Um, but I've got to take some points off for those two big, big errors. So he gets a five. Saka, my man in a match. Eight for Bukai Saka. Two magnificent assists. Just wonderful, wonderful player. Odegaard a seven. Smith Rowe gets a six. And then Orba gets an eight for those two clinical finishes. A few subs came on. I think five came on as his way in the Europa League. I'm just going to mark two of them. Both Willian and Party get a six because they were on for the longest out of the two. Right, that's it from me, everyone. Thank you for watching this morning. Please do, like I said, if you're watching this early on and the draw hasn't happened yet, then please do follow me on Twitter from midday and I'll cover the Europa League draw and see who Arsenal get. And if not, enjoy the rest of your, fr uh, rest of your Friday. The sun is shining, the sky is blue and Arsenal are through to the next round of the Europa League. So long, everyone. Have a good day.